WebPop's template engine, PopTags, gives you full control over your HTML markup when you render your dynamic content. Here's how that works. We start by hard coding a really simple HTML5 document in the index template of a blank project. And all this does right now is render out this H1. And if we take a look at our preview URL, that's exactly what we see. So let's go ahead and make this H1 render dynamically. We'll start by actually adding the pop admin tag to the head of our document. Now this won't actually render anything, but what it does is add a script which will let us use the on-site editor to edit content. And this is really what you provide your clients as you're building sites for them, for them to really easily be able to edit their sites. Now let's get back to making that H1 dynamic. If we go down here, we can open up a pop content tag and within that we can grab the title of the current content which is called blank project and we can render that out with pop title and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this static h1 now if I hit save and we take a look at our preview we'll see this dynamic title being rendered out and we can actually go ahead and change it with the admin script here. If we click on that gear, it'll toggle this admin bar and that gives us this edit option. And we can change this to something like simple example. And when I hit save, it'll instantly update it. So that was easy. Now let's do something a bit more interesting. Rather than just render out a title, let's render out an image. We'll hop into the content tab and take a look at what's going on. You can see this title field, which we changed with the on-site editor. And you'll also notice these empty description and body fields. And we can actually go ahead and remove these and add an image field. So I'm gonna to go to edit fields here and just delete the description and delete the body. And over on the right here, add an image field. And if you'll notice, there's some settings here. I'm gonna keep them as defaults, but notice the field name image. This is what's gonna be creating our pop image tag that renders this. So I'm just gonna save this and then upload an image from my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this nice picture of an owl that I happen to have and give it a name. Owl. And insert that. I'll save this content now and hop back into design mode. So in order to render out this image, I'm gonna go into my content tag and just do pop image. I'll hit save on that. And if we take a look at our preview URL, we can see it appears. But remember what I said about templating engine giving you complete control? Well, this image tag is actually generating its own markup. If we inspect it, we'll see that it is actually outputting some custom attributes here. It's setting a width and a height, as well as the alt, along with just the SRC to the image. And let's go ahead and generate our own image tag where we can control this. So if we hop back into our index template, we will actually change this image tag from a self-closing tag to a wrapping tag, similar to how our content tag currently is. This will give us access to the SRC and title attributes of the current image field. So basically, we'll just create our own regular image tag and populate its SRC with pop SRC and its alt with pop Alt. And we'll just leave the height and width out of it. So really this is all we should see now. And if we go over into our preview, we'll still see the same image because we haven't changed that. But if we inspect it, it no longer has its height and width attributes. So that's really all there is to it. You can either choose to use an image tag or generate it yourself. And this basic pattern applies to any part of WebPop. I mean, we've barely scratched the surface here, but no matter how deep you dig, 
you'll find that this basic principle is true. Whatever you put in is what comes out, and it's entirely your choice how you want to render it.